Welcome to another episode of SpaceX in the News, where I compile SpaceX current events from all around the internet and compile them into one convenient location. My name is Kevin, and today we're celebrating our one year anniversary of SpaceX in the News. It was a dud. But we're also coming up on our two year anniversary of our first SpaceX video. And let's not forget, happy 4th of July. So we're gonna do some Starhopper news, but we'll also focus heavily on Starship today. Then we'll briefly get caught up on what's going on with those Starlink Constellation satellites that are currently orbiting the Earth, as well as Crew Dragon Anomaly updates, some awesome news about fairing recovery, some SpaceX future talk, and then today's honorable mention. Let's get started. So if you remember back to last week, it had been announced by Elon that SN5 was no longer the Raptor that was going to be placed on Starhopper for its upcoming flights. That job has been passed off to SN6, which has been spotted at McGregor, which is SpaceX's testing facility in Texas, and is aiming to ship to Boca Chica next week, so long as the tests have gone well. If you're new to the channel, or you're just not familiar with what SpaceX has been up to lately, click on the link in the top right corner of this video, and it'll take you to another video of mine that explains what Starhopper is. While it's not new news, that the upcoming tethered Starhopper flight has been pushed back a lot lately, from mid-June to late June, then early July to mid-July, and then just recently, July 11th, but now the current date for Starhopper's next launch is July 17th, which is subject to change and could change maybe tomorrow. And may I just add, let's not be mad, let's just be grateful. Sure, SpaceX has a reputation for setting extreme goals and then delaying them, but when they do launch, they launch it right. So be patient and keep the faith because it's gonna happen, and when it does, it's gonna be awesome. And speaking of awesome things, let's turn over to Starship now. Progress in Boca Chica is steady as the ship grows meter by meter. Now, I'm not sure what these guys have been up to, but it looks pretty technical. But is it just me or is Starship looking really shiny lately? Look out, Team Coco. And that large structure next to Starship has gotten even bigger. I'm still convinced that it's a giant windbreaker like the Starship and Coco has, but if you believe it's something different, just let me know down in the comments. And speaking of Coco, this drone image was sent to me by a fan of the channel who wished to remain anonymous. You can see the big concrete slab right there front and center. My best guess is that it's going to be some sort of assembly area, but maybe you have reason to believe it's something else. Some big ideas concerning Starship have just recently made the news. It turns out SpaceX is now targeting 2021 for the first commercial Starship launch. And unfortunately, no, it's not for commercial passenger trips. SpaceX's vice president of commercial sales is quoted as saying that we are in discussions with three different customers as we speak right now to be that first mission. And those three different customers are all telecom companies. So in 2021, we could see Starship and Super Heavy lift the first satellites into orbit. Now Starship's hull is nine meters wide and the vehicle is capable of taking up to 100 metric tons into orbit around the Earth. Now I would like to personally add that it is absolutely incredible that in a couple years, we could take such huge payloads into space. And with these bigger payloads comes an even bigger risk. Because the bigger equipment, the more money you put into it, which means the more money you you invested in a single launch. Hopefully it all works out. Still, nothing but respect for these companies that are willing to risk it for innovation. Space News concluded their article with a quote from Hofeller. We have future hops coming up later this year. The goal is to get orbital as quickly as possible, potentially even this year, with the full stack operational by the end of next year, and then customers in early 2021. Now we already know that Elon plans on sending about 100 astronauts to Mars when Starship is operational. However, the other day he was asked on Twitter how many passengers he thinks Starship can carry on Earth to Earth transportation missions, in which Elon responded about a thousand passengers as all seats would be coach and no toilets pilot area or food gallery would be needed most flights would only be 15 to 20 minutes so it's basically an intercontinental ballistic missile traveling at Mach 25 that lands. And he also said that passengers will probably not be allowed to fly freely around the cabin, and instead related it to the restraining mechanisms on Space Mountain and Disney World. It's being speculated that an average flight ticket will cost you between $500 and $2,000, which I think we can agree is a lot cheaper than we were all thinking, but again, this is all speculation at this point, nothing set in stone. Moving on, we got some updates to the first Starlink satellites that SpaceX put up about a month ago. The gist of it is that 57 satellites are communicating with the ground, 40 five of the satellites launched have reached their operational altitude. Five more are still raising their orbits. Five are currently being checked out prior to orbital raising. Two satellites are being actively deorbited to simulate end of life disposal. And that the three satellites that are not communicating with Earth are being passively deorbited. We should see more Starlink launches sometime later this year. We also received a couple updates from the Crew Dragon Anomaly that happened a couple months ago. Eric Berger tweeted that NASA will do well to get SpaceX's in-flight abort test done in 2019. And that crewed flights are not entirely off the table. 
however unlikely. Also that SpaceX has since been working well with NASA after the anomaly, and two of his sources have confirmed that the issues are not with the Super Draco thrusters, and will probably only cause a delay of months rather than a year or more. So that's great news. And it makes me wonder if the COPVs are in fact the real issue here. Now let's move on to some really cool tweets that Elon put out concerning fairing recovery. What you're looking at is a fairing half from the recent STP-2 Falcon Heavy mission. It just underwent fairing separation and is falling through the atmosphere. And you can see the plasma build up. It's pretty amazing. And here you can see it with its parachute deployed. And then the next video shows footage from Go Miss Tree, formerly known as Mr. Steven, catching the fairing in its net for the very first time. What makes all this extremely amazing is that the parachute is being controlled autonomously by the fairing, and Miss Tree is also steering on its own. So you have these two independent entities out in the middle of the ocean at night, catching something from space on their own with no human help. It is pretty spectacular, and I'll be the first to admit that for a while there, when you know it was kind of a dead period with Mr. Steven, I didn't think they were ever going to do it. I thought they were going to give up. But let's just bring it back down a notch to some pretty somber news. The next Falcon Heavy, contracted by the U.S. Air Force, isn't scheduled to launch any earlier than September of 2020. So unfortunately, we have a little bit of a wait. But let's bring it right back up with some more good news. SpaceX was just awarded another Falcon 9 launch, which is its sixth for the year. This Falcon 9 is scheduled to launch an identical pair of communication satellites no earlier than 2022. And while we're still on the subject of Falcon 9s, it was just announced that the Kennedy Space Center wants a Falcon 9 booster of its own for its rocket garden. Will SpaceX give them one? Stay tuned to find out. But yeah, probably. SpaceX and NASA have a pretty good relationship <laughs> when SpaceX isn't suing them. <laughs> SpaceX also just set a new Falcon 9 Block 5 reusability milestone. They announced that they plan to launch the same Falcon 9 Block 5 booster for the fifth time or sixth time by the end of 2019. I believe the record right now is three launches for a single booster. It could be four, but I'm pretty sure it's three. If it's four and I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments. All right, let's wrap this up with today's honorable mention. So I guess you could argue that NASA's equivalent to the SpaceX Crew Dragon is their Orion capsule. It looks pretty similar to the Apollo capsule of the 60s and 70s, and it is the capsule that NASA plans on using for its Artemis project, their project to get them back to the moon by 2024. Now while we're waiting for SpaceX to do their in-flight abort test for Crew Dragon, NASA just did theirs for the Orion capsule the other day, and it was actually pretty sweet. I'm a huge fan of in-flight abort tests mainly for two reasons. You get to see two launches instead of one, and I'm a huge fan of parachutes. And I was going to cover it live right here on my channel, but then it was announced that NASA wasn't going to be using parachutes. Instead, they let the capsule splash down at over 300 meters a second. Oh, I just confirmed it's 300 miles per hour. I looked it up because I didn't want to be yelled at by you guys. Thank you for motivating me. But anyway, it appears the test went flawlessly. There's some pretty cool images of the rocket going straight up and then blasted the capsule away to simulate an emergency abort. And then just before hard splashdown, the capsule ejected all the data of the launch to be recovered by NASA. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Huge shout out and thank you to my Patreon community for supporting this channel. If you'd like to join our Patreon, there's a link down in the description and there's a link to our Discord page as well. See you in the next one. Godspeed.